Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul Tutorials in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In previous videos I explained how to install Realism Overhaul assuming you're not using CCAN and also how to build a simple rocket using the original parts that come with the game. And so I am going to now proceed with installing other mods that allow us to build a wider variety of rockets. And the first thing we're going to do is add some engines. Now I'm not going to use, this is the Realism Overhaul GitHub which I introduced in the first video. And I'm not going to use the RO Engines mod here because it's sort of a hodgepodge of things. And I sort of want a more uniform art style basically. And uh, we'll, we'll get to that later on. So I want certain categories of rockets. And for a more, uh, to have a more coherent style, I'm going to use the Real Engines mod. And there's a forum page here. You notice that it says for 1.3. But basically, as long as a mod is from 1.3 onward, there's, there's, one, there's one main problem that can occur, and that's a shader issue. As long as you don't have the shader issue, uh, in which case it'll just look wrong, then it should be okay. So we're going to try this. And we're going to see how this Real Engines mod works out for us. So uh, for those who don't know SpaceDock, SpaceDock is another place you can get your mods. Sometimes the, the forum links lead to uh, SpaceDock, so this one does. Okay, so we have Real Engines here. And we're going to uh, make sure when you're unzipping that you don't just assume that this is the right folder. Find the game data folder, and it's the folder inside the game data folder. So you might be tricked in this case to zip unzip this one. When you're unzipping things, make sure you're unzipping the right thing. Okay, so that's uh, real engines. We also want two other mods uh, as our first baseline mods that we really, really need. And one is procedural parts, and the other is procedural fairings. Um, these are both forked, so that makes me worried because that means they're not the original version. And to some extent, I want to go to the forum page for procedural parts because if I get here, oh, well, they do have the other textures. You see, there are these other texture packs, but this isn't all of them. This is just two of them, it looks like. Uh, but here it goes to the full thread or not. <laughs> oh, joy. The, this black heart texture pack is the one I really like. Uh, latest release for procedural parts. Well, we've got that. That's okay. That's not hopeful, but uh, let's see. There's a thread here for black heart textures. No. And these procedural textures. Well, you can get these textures for procedural parts. You want as many procedural part textures as you can get. Uh, it doesn't look like these links are maintained anymore. So one thing you can do, I guess, is make your own. Um, if you look through my videos, there is a video on how to make procedural part textures. I made some of my own, just plain colors for me, but you can do some wacky things uh, to add textures to procedural parts, anything you want really. So yeah, unfortunately it doesn't look like the procedural part texture packs are available anymore, and that's a shame. Okay, so we want procedural fairings, and uh, well, I don't know about the pre-release, so I'll just take this release for now. Okay, so real engines, procedural fairings, not procedural fairings for everything, just procedural fairings, and procedural parts. Again, I'm always clicking to make sure that it isn't the game data folder inside. All right, so that's it. Three mods. Let's see what rockets we can build now. Okay, so looking at our new engines, we've got these AJ-10s, they're obviously new, very spiffy looking, you can see why I like this pack. And these uh, were initially used in the Vanguard rocket, uh, this one in particular was probably in the Vanguard rocket second stage, and then in the Thor rocket, the upper stage, and then the Delta rocket upper stage. And so uh, this one is more in the Delta. It'll give you the information in the description, you can see here. Um, used in, on Thor Able Star and Delta E through N, and then uh, the more advanced uh, AJ-10s, we have one of those here. It doesn't actually have an AJ-10 Advanced, interestingly enough. Well, I guess it doesn't fit the model, but the AJ-10 Advanced is the one on the Delta 2. 
So this AJ10190 incidentally is the Orion engine for its service module and it's also based on the shuttle OMS engines which is uh, basically what that is supposed to be but that's the stock part. Now uh, we could make a rocket out of this and I would prefer to use the mid one and we'll make a, um, a delta. I think we'll make a delta. So one of the older deltas and what we can do is we've got these deprecated procedural tanks now remember last time I said that uh, we need a pressure fed engine for a uh, pressure fed tank for certain engines a service module tank and if we uh, take a look at this it says it's pressure fed and feed pressure too low again so we're looking for a service module tank and here we have a procedural tank service module but this is not what we want anymore this was how it used to be it used to be service module tank um, they've added a whole bunch of other stuff to this version that is new to me even. Um, this, this de uh, they've deprecated the old way and then this integrated structure, separate structure. Um, so I'm going to assume that this is... Uh, uh, we'll go with an integrated structure tank and tank type. Uh, it needs to be, it, it's uh, much more obscure now, but it's this HP thing. That means it's a high pressure tank and we'll be able to see that when we put the engine on. Okay, and so uh, right now if I set it to the original type, this says feed pressure to, well, well you have to fill up the tank first and it already gives you which fuels to use here. So you just click on this and it'll have the right fuel mixture for this engine. And But even if we have the fuels in, it still says feed pressure too low. If we change the tank to this high pressure one, HP, I know it's really difficult to see, but if we put that in, then this now says very stable. And that is very important, <laughs> obviously. It doesn't matter how you sell the fuel down or anything. Um, if, if that says feed pressure too low, it's never going to light. Okay, and there are a whole bunch of uh, other types. I don't... These are all new to me, too. So I can't say too much. I think... I wish they had kept it simple, but <laughs> as if it wasn't complicated enough already, I don't know what. Uh, they, they used to have uh, tech levels for a time uh, for RP1, but now I don't know what this tank int aluminum is. Aluminum copper, uh, aluminum lithium. Aluminum lithium is the one. So uh, <laughs> here we get into real details. Aluminum is what was is often used and was also used on the space shuttle external tank initially. Aluminum lithium is what they changed it to when they wanted the super lightweight tank. The super lightweight tank has aluminum lithium structure. And yeah, it's just more expensive that way. Uh, it is lighter. So if we wanted a lighter stage, we'd use that. But I'm pretty sure that the Delta rocket would have had aluminum. And its diameter uh, in its full shape is 2.44 meters. Why 2.44, you, you ask? That's 8 feet. <laughs> that's, that's because American. 2.44 meters. Okay, and it looks a little bit weird. Uh, so what you can do is create, uh, just add another tank, and we, we want uh, integral structure tanks. So the burn time for this stage is 7 minutes and 13 seconds. And here, I mean, we're getting so small that I'm just going to reduce the utilization of this part because we're clipping the engine in and seven minutes I mean we're still way above that now you can look up the dry mass of the stage and see what the stage looks like in order to try and mimic it but I'll just try and get the essentials that's uh, seven minutes and 16 seconds I'll leave it there and that's within three seconds okay so then we need a procedural fairing and we're going to go with uh, this interstage fairing adapter flat. Uh, uh, make sure it's on the right node and get rid of that shroud and reduce the height. And we want the same 2.44 meter. This is the simplest Delta rocket. There are complicated versions but 
you want extra height so that it uh, reaches up to there, otherwise it'll only reach to the nozzle. We can change textures here, but we don't have all the textures that I'm accustomed to. Okay, and we need a controller. We'll just use the Delta Avionics package. Well, doesn't quite fit, does it? So I'm just going to tuck it in. Are there, uh, if you have FASA, you might have the right um, sized Delta ring. Uh, unless they have that here now. I don't think so. That uh, part comes uh, is based on a part in FASA, so you might want the FASA pack to make Delta rockets too. One thing the real engine pack doesn't have is um, the SRBs, and that's something else we'll need to get to. Okay, and having done this, I'm gonna put a dummy payload. We'll put a service module tank, which isn't what it, uh, not, now it's uh, because it carries certain payloads and not because it's a uh, pressure fed tank. We're going to use my typical payload Usually what I use is avgas because uh, it's rare for any engine to use it and so it's a good dummy payload but also it shows up. One issue with using like lead ballast is it doesn't show up and so that tends to confuse me. You can see the mass is in but it doesn't show up as an entity there and so I just want to avoid confusion and I, I just put the avgas in. Let's go with two tons. Now, I don't think we have exactly a delta fairing. That'll be under payloads. Uh, we've got a conic ogive. Let me just... Uh, uh, did they change the name of the... They changed the name of the egg-shaped. They call it ogive. Come on. Do you have to? Why make things more complicated? Egg-shaped was fine. Anyway. Um, let's see if we can get a good... Ah, uh, no, that's too big. Old style delta ish fairing. I mean, that's okay. Alright. And now the main tank. Same integral structure we find. Same 2.44 meter diameter. Now we want a blue texture. These used to be alphabetical. Oh, this this one. I don't know why they're not alphabetical anymore. And the bottom engine for this is an H1. Unfortunately, the only H1 we have is the stock one, but that's fine. At least we had the stock one. Uh, let me see if it has the RS-27, which is the upgrade version of the H1. Uh, these are all from the real engine pack. You see all these. It's a shame that uh, it doesn't come with a better RL10 though. That you can get from FASA. Yep, there isn't an RS27 either. Okay, so this is our our rocket. And we will want this fuel in. This is not a pressure fed engine so you can see pressure uh, propellant very stable so we don't need a high pressure tank on this which will save mass. The high pressure tanks are are uh, heavier. You know what the Delta M's were still with the weird tiny stages. <laughs> the, the thinner Delta stages. It looks like we're actually basically a Delta 2. I'm, I'm aiming to be a Delta 2 except we've got uh, not the right engine. I've switched to the AJ-10 118E, but it's supposed to be a 118K. That's the Delta II engine. But otherwise, and the Delta II would have the RS-27. We can change that here though. So this is the Delta II configuration. Let's do that. And we'll set the burn times. I already sort of set the burn time for the upper stage to that of the Delta II, but it's a weaker engine though. Yeah, that's fine for the Delta II's upper stage. The burn time for lower stage is uh, 4 minutes and 37 
seconds. Uh, sorry, 39 seconds, it looks like. Well, we're a long way off from that. Okay. But you can see his thrust to weight ratio off the ground is too low. And as a result, it needs to have SRBs. Do we have the right kind of SRB? We need casters. Well, we only have caster 1s. It uses caster 4s. But in lieu of caster 4s, the caster 1s are going to have to do. They're not nearly good enough, though. One fairing node, and we won't even decouple it. Uh, not that decoupler. Decouple when fairing on? No, definitely not. Okay, and so... Okay, um, I think we better lighten the payload. I don't think it can carry all this. Oh wait, we're still in sea level vacuum. Okay, we're, we're better, all right. Still carrying two tons. And uh, we'll go with, uh, we'll go with three boosters. That's, uh, well, I mean, normally they launch with nine. All right, we'll put three sets of three. And we'll see if we can fit them. The worry is I don't know if we can fit these caster ones all around. Uh, maybe. There's six lit on the ground and then three lit in the air. On the Delta twos. We can use procedural nose cones. Why is it not alphabetical? This is like the first time I've seen it. I'll go with what they call stock-alike. And uh, it's probably not evenly placed. No, it isn't. Two sets of boosters, I'll just randomly pick two. The In the real case, you'd have the airlit ones having vacuum nozzles, which are longer, so they're different than the ones lit on the surface. Well, hopefully that'll work out. Maybe we'll have a disaster. Let's put some launch clamps. I guess three-way symmetry would be good. Uh, that looks a bit tight, but we'll make it work out for us. And what is our actual launch liftoff thrust weight ratio? 1.96 in vacuum, 1.71 at sea level. Okay. But we have to light this engine first. I have not put RCS on the upper stage. That may be a flaw. Might want uh, Ullage rockets as well. We'll see. I don't think I usually use Ullage rockets on the Delta II. Oh. Mm. Apparently the Delta Core does not have communication when not using realism, uh, sorry, remote tech. That might be a problem. Well, we'll go with the surface mount ones. We can uh, do something surreptitious. And, um... Let's tuck them inside this area here. Well, now we have communication. Let's see how long it lasts. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition of the RS-27A, and launch. This can be a difficult rocket to handle, especially with its proper boosters, which give even more thrust-to-weight ratio. Those boosters last for longer though, so we're gonna have an additional problem here soon, <laughs> in that we're not gonna have a whole lot of thrust-to-weight ratio. Air lip boosters. Uh, it's a little bit wiggly. Mechjab would help here and separation of those guys. Actually, it holds on to them for a little while just to make sure they splash down instead of landing on land. Uh, it's very wiggly. And then hopefully, when we separate these, we'll have a thrust weight ratio of one on the main engine, of course. That's the issue here. Uh, we're a little bit shallow. Well, we seem to be accelerating still, but wow. 
no. Okay. I think I recommend one more mod at this stage. And that is MechJeb. You wouldn't need MechJeb for every rocket, but the Delta II style rocket with the high thrust to weight ratio gets a lot of dynamic pressure, and so it's hard to handle manually. And MechJeb got all that stuff. Make sure that's not game data inside, of course. And MechJeb, we can delete the parts. We don't need the MechJeb parts. It'll be part. It'll be included in all the cores already. And that's a realism overhaul feature. It adds uh, MechJeb to all the cores. So we do not need those parts. Okay, back to the game. Okay, let's see if I can control this a little bit better this time with Smart ASS. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, get all the stuff up. And well, we might as well have our orbital information there. Okay, ignition, and we want surface, and launch, and execute. Execute will turn off SAS, but I leave SAS on while we're clearing the clamps. Well, I'm certainly going steeper for my health, I suppose. And ignition. And let go of those boosters. We've got a bit of a roll. Uh, we didn't put the vernier thrusters on the stage. Those are the LR-101s. So it does have vernier thrusters that I neglected. And I don't think Real Engines has those, but the stock game does. I'll have to check that though. But I think it's the radial version of the Ant engine that gets turned into the LR-101. But right now we don't have roll control. We better stop it here. Got a long way to go. Because the next stage is 7 minutes, we probably want a time to apoapsis of about 2 minutes and 40 seconds to 3 minutes. We could get by with less though. I don't think we're going to make orbit with this payload. Um, we'll see. But two tons might have been too much for it, given that we have the wrong SRBs and the wrong upper stage engine. I mean, it's not the wrong engine, it's just an earlier variant of the engine that we're supposed to be using. This engine does not throttle, so we're stuck here. And so, again, I'm aiming for that time to apoapsis. We can probably flatten out now. Very high thrust weight ratio there, and separation and ignition. And we can let go of the fairings now, too. Please. Thank you. Modicum of up pitch will be good here. It is going to be close, but I think we're going to fall just short. Alright, so there we are. Just shy of orbit. But, uh, yeah, just lighten the load a bit. If we had a different engine selection, we could get there. But let me go through some other uh, rocket configurations now. So we're just going to go in order of the engines that Real Engines has. Now, the AJ-10-137 is the service module engine for Apollo. So we're not going to use that, but the standard service module diameter is 4 meters. So you can sort of remember that. That's usually the tank it goes with. And it's rather large. You can see how big... The AJ-10-137 is compared to the diameter of the Delta II, so it needs that 4 meter thing. Uh, this is two AJ-10-138s, that's for trans stage, and that is an upper stage for the Titan II. This is a stock, the, the stock engines, of course, but uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. So that's the upper stage, uh, that's beyond the second stage of Titan II, and that's the upper stage option. AJ-10-190 we already talked about, that's the Orion service module. And this one's the shuttle OMS engines. And uh, E1 uh, was not actually used. It was a proposal. And it tells you there it's for Titan 1, but it could be for other things. Uh, the F1 engines, well, let's see. Could we make uh, Saturn V? Well, yes, we can. And let's use this as a basis so I don't have to redo everything. But so uh, what we want is a diameter of uh, 
6.6 meters. Instead of this engine, we'll change this cone and we will place a J2. And we have a nicer J2 now here. And so let's get the bottom a little bit smaller, increase the length. And this is a S4B stage. And the S4B stage can last for 8 minutes and 20 seconds. It depends on the configuration of this though. So we can see the different variants here. This is the base variant used on the Saturn, the first Saturn 1Bs. Mind that. Um, the later Saturn 1Bs still use this better variant. And uh, the later Apollo missions use this variant. So we're going to go with the Apollo 8 onward. Use this variant. And we're going to fill up these tanks. Utilization should be, um, let's go with 88 for now. You will want some sort of RCS system, the APS pack or something like that to control it. Let's get this stage all on its own. And we've got 7 minutes and 1 second. We need 8 minutes and 20 seconds, which is 500 seconds. Not too hard to remember. Okay, and then we have a decent stage there. And uh, you might want to put some MLI layers uh, 20 only, eh? That's reduced from before. It used to allow you 100. Uh, okay, and our texture should probably should be something different, not redstone. Let's just go... <laughs> it's a little bit tough for me because uh, they're not in order anymore. Uh, this Saturn texture will be a good start. At this point, though, you can make a Saturn 1B first. We'll, we'll just uh, quickly get that right. So that'll be another 6.6 .6 meter stage. Okay, so that'll be Saturn 1B style. You can make it fancy by putting a whole bunch of tanks. Like you could make a... Because what it really was was a tank about uh, this sort of size. Um, it's 10 feet tank, 10 foot tank. And then it would have eight of the redstone tanks. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to go 6.6 .6 altogether. And you can cap them with 6.6 .6 meter tanks as well. Um, and then what I really had at the bottom for Saturn 1B was four of these engines at the center. And then four of them really actually like this. And then some sort of fairing. And then all the fins. All the fins. Eight fins. So it's like that. But remember to configure it for H1, and then you can look up the burn time on uh, Wikipedia or something. Okay, so we were going to build the Saturn V, though, so we have to go up to 10.1. Got to copy this bit here, but it needs to be much wider, of course. It looks something like this. And we'll also grab that engine the J2 engine, and the J2 engine goes one on the center and four on the edges. And then we'll probably uh, you'll need a lot of settling rockets for this stage, because unlike the Delta II, the big hydrogen oxygen tanks get unsettled very easily. This needs to go up to 10.1. Oh, this is still on kerosene, so we need to change this to the right fuel for this stage, and that's automatically given here, hydrogen and oxygen, and we want six minutes. So after that, the couples right here will put these engines. And that is less than six minutes, so we need this to be a little bit larger. And that's six minutes, okay? So that'll be a proper stage. The thrust wave ratio looks worrisome because we're not in vacuum. Actually, it still looks worrisome because, frankly, um, these were pretty low-powered stages. They really require the F1 engines to get them going. Speaking of which, the F1 engines, one in the center. Of course, these are the stock engines. Uh, five, uh, four on the sides again, 
and you want the nose cones or something to be... I mean, you can use these uh, procedural nose cones to do the trick, or whatever you like, but um, they are sharp. They are big. Uh, probably four meters will do the trick. And they can be tucked in somewhat. And there'll be fins. These probably should be a little bit longer. And obviously this tank, you'll have to pick a different texture. I'll just temporarily put it to the satin one for now. And there are fins on the, those bits and the fairing on here. But I'm not going to go into further detail. I'll complete this rocket and we'll launch it uh, maybe in a subsequent video, just for fun. But I'll leave it here for now. This is sufficient right now. Um, we've got kerosene in here. Let's take a look at the stage time on that stage. We're looking for 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, it's 2 minutes right now, so it needs to be longer. Ah, uh, it's doing that thing. So 2 minutes and 45 seconds is 165 seconds. It could be less than that. It's only the later missions that had that much. So that would be later missions. You can put less. And it takes off very gradually. 1.17 thrust weight ratio. Uh, so, But you could underfuel this. Earlier missions didn't have quite so much. Okay, and you can underfuel the other ones as well. They also tended to uh, use less fuel in the earlier missions. I'm interested why this has suddenly gotten to 512 seconds. So, but we'll deal with that later because I don't have hangar extender in here yet. That's another mod. Uh, we'll get to those other mods later. But for now, I'll leave this. I'll actually save it. And I talked about the Saturn 1B. Let's uh, take a look at what the next engines up are. So F1 we dealt with. Um, we've got these Soyuz-ish fuel tanks. J2 was not used, except for Saturn 1B and the Saturn 5 was not used on anything else. Um, this, this is just an upper stage propulsion engine. So you would use it for some sort of uh, small upper stage. That's uh, 365 is, oh, this is not configured right. Sorry. Um, why why does this not have a non-RO tag? Why, why is it the correct model name and not, uh, I guess, uh, oh, that's all very suspicious. Okay, don't use this engine. <laughs> This is, this is weird. Okay, I mentioned that there were the vernier thrusters on the Delta II that I forgot. That's these, LR-101. So you want to slap those on to control roll. Um, LR-105 is for the Atlas rocket, but we don't have the right tanks, and I would suggest using FASA for that. And that engine was never used. This is the upper stage engine for the Titan rocket. And we also have the lower stage engines for the Titan rocket. So let's build a Titan rocket. Those are the stock parts, though. The thing about the Titan rocket is that hot stage is the upper stage, which is... I suppose we do have a part that can manage that. The diameter that you want is 3.05 meters. And that is 10 feet. <laughs> That's why it's 3.05 meters. That's also the diameter of the Centaur stage, which is an upper stage often used with the Titan rocket. Well, this... Uh, this actually comes with its own thing. And you can see it is sized right for this situation. I'm tempted to keep the Saturn textures. But what about hot staging? Well, didn't we have a uh, hot staging decoupler these days? Yes, we do. But it's the wrong size. So if you want to use the hot staging decoupler with this, you'll need tweak scale. So we are... Uh, we do not have a hot staging decoupler. We could do something haphazard, though. And we could just use struts to make a semblance of a thing. It's haphazard and not the nicest thing ever. Yeah, and so you probably want some sort of shroud there. And then at the bottom, we have the LR87. And that is sized right. And for the Titan rockets with boosters, you would have boosters on the side. It is oriented like this, the LR-87. And so that is a Titan rocket. 
Um, I'll, I'll have you look up the time burn times because the different variants of the Titan rocket have different settings. Uh, this engine needs to be set to something with Arizin NTO, and so it is. Uh, there was an early Carolox version that's here, but uh, most of the Titan rockets used Arizin NTO. And note there are two of them here, so you show tank UI and then pick the one for the right engine. It says used by LR91, so that's the right one. And then this we would want to reset to the other one in vacuum. Well, that's a lot, but that's because the Titan rocket is suited to lifting much higher payloads than this. And, um, well, without boosters, we'll say, I'm looking at this down here and getting 3,000, oh, sorry, 9,500. And it looks like uh, this could lift 5.5 uh, tons without any further help. And that makes sense when you think about the Gemini capsule and its service module. So that's about right. Okay, next engines. The Lunar Module Ascent engine would of course go on the Lunar Module. So that comes with the real engine pack and there's the Descent engine, so same deal. Uh, we got a lot of nuclear engines modified from the Nerve engine and that's just built into a realism overhaul. We do have a normal Nerva. I'm not, I haven't really explored these very well. I don't like them. Okay, so then we have the N1 engines. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Well, the easiest thing to make with uh, like the NK, uh, I think it was the 33 on the Antares rocket. Antares rocket has two of these and then uh, a Castor 120 on the upper stage. We do have a Castor 120 here, I think. Um, yes, so this SRB would be the upper stage of the Antares rocket. And we're talking about the Antares 100 uh, series uh, when it exploded because this NK-33 failed. The N1 configuration, I'm not going to do the really top part. And to get the conics right, you're going to have to look up a diagram. I don't remember the diameters off the top of my head. Um, maybe I'll look it up. Hold on. Okay, we're going from the block V on down. So just the three main stages of the N1 rocket. Uh, the top of it is 5.5 meters. And uh, it needs to be a conic though. And the bottom is 6.8. I really should reroute. Let me reroute to this tank. Otherwise we're not gonna get the right Delta Vs. Okay, so then we need four of the NK21 engines. That's these, the NK9, V, 21, 19, all that. So you know you need to configure it. So four of these. And these need to be configured to NK21. Uh, 20, uh, 21. Well, it depends on which version. Uh, so NK21 right now. Later ones would use 19. You can use the others if you think it'll help. I mean, they didn't get to orbit or anything, so you can do whatever you like. Tuck them in. Uh, there's usually a fairing around them before we get the the strutting for the hot staging. And this stage lasted for about six minutes. So let's say 75 tons on the top, just so that our delta V numbers down here don't look wacky. And now we've got a little bit of a problem here, because we don't have a central engine to attach this to, unlike with the LR91. And I don't want to sort of make a strut there, so I'm just going to go with the procedural fairings. But yeah, highly recommend like getting tweak scale for the hot staging business. So we want 6.8. And for now, I'm just going to, uh, this is just temporary, just to show you the basic configuration of the rocket. Okay, I'm going to copy this stage and put it down here. And we want the top to be 6.8. And the bottom will be 9.8. Not these engines, but the NK-43s. Or NK-15V. Initially is NK-15V, and there are eight of them. You might want to put them in different symmetry, like 4x4. Four four. Um, they really don't fit very well, do they? So you'll probably, one thing you can do is put an upside down procedural fairing like this, and then just keep the fairing on. 
But yeah, there's eight of them. That's as close as I can make them. Okay, and then, well, I'm just going to copy this again. So let's, let me check the burn time on this. Make sure, remove all tech, because the fuel mixture might be a little bit different, but in this case, it's not. Um, and then this stage, hold on, it's confused by the way I've done this. Uh, we need to enable, because of the way I've done this, I need to enable crossfeed there. And the stage is supposed to have a burn time of 2 minutes and 14 seconds max. But it's a little bit complicated. That'll be 2 minutes and 14 seconds. But I think it's actually a little bit less than that and it turns off some of the engines. Okay, so then the top of this is 9.8. Well, you have to account for... You know, the interstage bit, but I'm not. And then the bottom is a whopping 16.9, but that's got the uh, the skirt bit. And instead of these engines, we are looking at the NK-15s. And that's a whole... It's technically a center ring of 6, and then 24 on the outside. Can we fit them? We'd probably have to rotate them in some funny way. Well, now you know why it needs to skirt as well. So there, I mean, to avoid the clipping, we need a little bit of an extra little skirt here. And But let me just add the fuels and make sure we get the right burn time, make sure all these in, are in the same stage. Right now it says 85 seconds. What we need is 2 minutes and 18 seconds, but it's, once again, a little bit complicated. Um, I feel like it's taking fuel from... is it not? Okay, you know what? I'm going to put an extra decoupler in so it doesn't draw fuel from the upper stage just to make me feel better. I don't know, I think some of that is includes throttling, because these engines all can throttle. So, I think some of it... They just actually throttle back to get the burn time instead of actually burning full thrust for the, all the 2 minutes and 28 seconds. But you can see by the thrust weight ratio you can easily put 2 minutes and 28 seconds in. Even the sea level. So that right there... Uh, there's 2 minutes and 28. But this is heavier than it's supposed to be, so you know it can't be right. And... It probably had well, it definitely doesn't need MLI layers. We can save some mass like that. But the truth of the matter is it the burn times I'm looking at probably represent it with throttling and it's actually smaller. N1 is complicated, is all I'm saying. But four NK21s there, eight NK15s there, NK15V there, and 30 NK15s there. So you can build that rocket. At this point though, I think you get the general picture of how to put them together, so I'm just going to talk about what they do. And so uh, this is an upper stage engine for the, oops, sorry, this one, for the R7 lunar launches. So this is the upper stage of the lunar rocket, so pushing probes to the moon, and that was the transfer stage. And then, so R7, that includes, you know, the Vostok, Voskhod, Soyuz, and Luna and Molnia and so this you can see it says Luna and Vostok has this upper stage. This is an upper stage for the Molnia rocket also used on the Voskhod and Soyuz. So again this is above the core stage these are the ones you're gonna use and then these are the verniers so we talked about the LR 101 verniers which are used on Delta in this case, these are the verniers for the block I stage. And unfortunately, it didn't actually mention which one is the block I, but just slot them on everything, it's fine. This one seems to have the verniers built in, doesn't it? Uh, you can see it's got the four verniers there. I hope it controls those properly. Uh, this is uh, the engine on the upper stage. Uh, sorry, this is the core of the energy rocket. This is an RD120 and an RD0120. This is the 0120. This is the 
core of the Energia rockets with Buren and all that. And so you want four of them on the core, and then on the boosters, you would want four RD-170s. And here's the RD-170s. So um, one of these each on four boosters, plus four of these on the core is an Energia rocket. And the Energia rocket core diameter is 8.4 meters, and the booster diameter is 3.9 meters. So that's that. Uh, this is use of uh, Soyuz 2 and an Angara. This is the upper stage of those rockets. And then there's a dual version. This is eight nozzles as opposed to four nozzles, but it's a variant of the same engine. Again, an upper stage engine. This is a Hydrolox engine. Uh, it's sort of like an RL-10, basically the equivalent, about uh, Russian equivalent. And it has not been used, I don't believe, in actual practice, but it would be an upper stage for the Angara 5. This is uh, the second stage and third stage engine of the Proton rocket. And so you'll have one on the third stage with verniers, and then four of these on the second stage. Uh, the first stage engine for the Proton rocket is this one, the RD-253 slash RD-275. RD-275 is for Proton M. So you'll need six of these on the first stage, four of these on the second stage, one of these on the third stage. And actually, uh, you don't need to worry about the Verniers because we have the Verniers built-in version of the same engine. This is the same engine as that one, just with the Verniers included. So you can just use this on the third stage. So you got your Proton rocket set. Uh, this is the booster engine for the R7 rockets, all of them. Uh, so it'll have configurations for the different ones. Uh, go away. And so you can see all these configurations. They match different uh, different R7 type rockets. So we can go through. This is for Sputnik, Sputnik, Luna. Uh, this one, Luna Vostok, Molnia, and uh, that one also Vosgod and Molnia M, and Soyuz, this is Soyuz U, Soyuz U2, and Soyuz FG. So you've got all those set up, and those are the booster, I don't want to auto strut, but anyway, uh, those are the booster engines, and they seem to have the verniers built in there, so you don't have to add separate verniers. And the RD-108 is the core engine. It's on the center portion of all those rockets, the R7, and again it has all those configurations there. So that's your R7 rockets all set up. So you got the R7 rockets, Proton rockets, you got your Zenit rocket uh, because that is just an RD-170 on the first stage. RD-120, this one is the upper stage of the Zenit rocket. So there you go. You've got your Zenit rockets sorted out. So one of these on the first stage, one of those on the second stage. Uh, probably plus verniers. And then the RD191 is for the Antares. Oh, well, you can use it for Antares. It's technically a RD181 on the Antares. You want two of these. And uh, also on Angara, it's one of these for each of the universal cores. So Angara 1 will have one of these on one core, and then Angara 5 has uh, one in the center and four boosters, each with one of these engines. Uh, this is the core engine for the Atlas V. If you're going to make an Atlas V, you'll need one of these on the first stage and then an RL-10. There it is. Yeah, it's the skipper. You might have a mod uh, to change the look of that. So that's your RL-10. And it has many RL-10 variants. The one you want, if you want to use an Atlas V now, is the RL-10C. So these are the Atlas V ones. But you can see all the others as well, including the Titan rocket uh, centaur stage ones and finally if you wanted to make sls you could make sls uh, you can make it with four of these rs25s these are this is the real engines version and then this is the stock version of the rs25 and you'll put four of these on an 8.4 meter core and then your boosters are these boosters we actually have the srbs for that so these are the five segment boosters for sls also Ares 1 if you wanted that for some reason. And you would use RL-10s for the upper stage of that, one for the ICPS and four for the EUS stage of the SLS. 
So you've got all the engines for SLS as well. Uh, this engine here is actually one of my favorites. Uh, the RD58 is the block D stage. It is used for a lot of transfers for probes and it can also be used in the right configuration as the OMS engines for Buran. So you've got the OMS engines for the shell and Buran if you want to make those shuttles. And these are also a small transfer engines for probes. Uh, they are the Briz engines and Frigate engine. Bri this Briz, this Frigate. So those are the upper stages on various rockets, including Proton and Soyuz. And you even have Super Dracos if you wanted to make a Dragon 2 and strap some Super Dracos in somehow. You have those. Oh, and Raptors. Those are work in progress, but you have uh, these Raptor engines. So, well, the only engines on a uh, Super Heavy or Starship are Raptor engines. You've got the surface ones, you've got the vacuum ones. So you can make a Starship and Super Heavy. So there you go. You've got a lot of rockets you can make just with these three mods. You just need to look up the diameters to make sure you've got them right. And the configurations can generally all be found on Wikipedia or some other site with a lot of rockets on. And yeah. So I, I mean, the goal here is to encourage you to think you don't need every mod in the world to be able to make rockets in Realism Overhaul. Uh, just with these three with uh, procedural parts, procedural fairings, and real engines. You can make a wide variety of real rockets. Anyway, but uh, if you have some rocket that you want to make that you don't think is covered by these parts, you can ask, and I'll talk about those in a subsequent video, and we'll move on to other topics. But this is basically the simplest way to build rockets and a whole variety of rockets in Realism Overhaul. Uh, don't point your engines like this, though. Okay, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.